Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomot from Come On Now, the podcast. As you see, I am still at the hospital. My wife finally did give birth. Yesterday afternoon, Saturday at 3.37 p.m., we welcomed into the world our beloved RJ Rodolfo Jr. That is my governmental name, Rodolfo. So he did come at 3.37 yesterday afternoon, and uh, we are blessed beyond belief to have our wonderful and beautiful son healthy and lovely. Of course, I had the opportunity in the hospital to watch UFC 302, and it did not disappoint. <clears throat> Some very questionable judging scorecards, I will say. Um, however, there were some great fights. The Islam Makachev Dustin Poirier championship fight completely lived up to the hype. <clears throat> it was a great, great fight. I, I think we learned a lot about Islam Makachev. He really stepped up to the plate. As I said in my uh, preview of the card, my heart was Dustin Poirier. My head said Makachev. And even with the ability to keep it standing for a good portion of it, the threat of the wrestling <clears throat> from Makachev did have Dustin thinking a little bit too much at times. I thought round one went as poorly as possible for Dustin Poirier. He was sloppy early on, and he needed to keep that fight in the middle of the ring, of the, of the cage, of the octagon, and he did not. He immediately let uh, Makachev push him up against the fence, and which Makachev did based on throwing some punches. And Poirier was a little sloppy in his defense. He got caught, pushed against the cage, taken down, and pretty much Makachev had his back for three plus minutes of that round. You know, it was it was a very uh, good first round for Makachev. However, he didn't really do a lot in terms of looking for submissions. It, it was more like a wear down to me. I didn't really see him going for submissions. And then in round two, I thought Dustin did a great job. He kept it standing. And I'm wondering if he, because he gave up a takedown with about 10 seconds left, when he got sloppy again, if that swayed a judge. Because if people saw the final scorecards, there was one judge that had it 2-2. Two to two, With Makachev winning round one, Poirier winning round two, Makachev winning round three, and Poirier winning round four. Now, there was another judge that had given one, two, three to Makachev and four to Poirier. And there was a third judge who had given one, three, and four to Makachev and two to Poirier. I thought two was a very telling round because I thought Poirier won that round. And not because he didn't get taken down for the duration of the round, really. But I thought because he, got, he landed the better strikes. Now, again, he didn't explode as much as I think he needed to. In this case, this is a fight where, you know, we, we all know how Makachev lost his first fight uh, to Adriano Martins, his only loss by knockout. The, the situation there was Makachev overextended with the left and got clipped with a right hook and put out. But that was a long time ago. And he has improved his game a lot more. He's a much better fighter than he was years ago. And I think people forget that. Like these guys, they train like crazy. So it, to expect it to be that simple is just disingenuous. It's not real. However, Dustin Poirier being a lefty, it made it definitely made it different for him because he hasn't faced a lot of lefties. And Poirier does pack big time power. So round two, I thought was a real good round for Poirier. Uh, I think when he got taken down, it's like he got sloppy. I don't know why Dustin Poirier doesn't wear tights. Because he's pulling his shorts up so much. And they're already short. And I don't know why he's not wearing tights. It's just weird to me. So it, it, it's one of those situations where it's like, why did you wear those shorts if you spend half the fight pulling them up? And when he's pulling them up, he's giving openings. 
and he did that a lot with a guy like Makachev. That's bad. Round three, Makachev took him down again, controlled the round. Um, my son is crying, so give me a second, and I will be right back. I have my son in my arms because he just started crying a second ago. But um, looking at round three, you know, this is RJ. See, this is the reason you need to subscribe to come to come on now the podcast and, and get with the program. So I got a newborn. Take care of him. Let's raise him to be an MMA fan. Hey, maybe an MMA fighter. I don't mind. I love the UFC. But he's going to have to kick people's butts because if I see him take a punch in the face, I'm going to want to take him out. <laughs> that said, um, you know, round three I thought was a you know dominant round, a pretty good round for, uh, I won't say dominant, but a good round for Makachev. Again, he, he got Poirier on the ground. Um, round four was the round. Though. I thought Poirier was turning it in round four. And he did a really good job in round four. I thought he was landing the strikes. You know, Makachev got split open by an elbow that you saw a big, I mean, he's got a nice little scar right here from, from, from Poirier. And that been around, was it three? It was three or four. But in, in, in round four, you know, he, he, it was Poirier's landing shots, landing shots, staying standing. Makachev can't get him down. And that was huge. But he didn't throw enough. It, it's just one of those things where it's like, again, he's playing with his shorts. Like, he didn't let his hands really, truly go the way I was hoping to see. So, you know, going into round five, there, you know, it could have been 2-2. And it was 2-2 on one card. I had it 2-2 because I thought Poirier round, won rounds two and four. But, and what's crazy to me is one judge, gave, I thought the best round of the fight for Poirier was round four. Yet a judge gave that to Makachev. I don't know how that happens. I, I mean, there were a lot of questions about these judges this weekend, um, last night. They, they were bad. You know, the, and I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, I don't know how you give Makachev round four. It just makes no sense. I, I, you know, maybe round two was, was – I thought round two was closer. Uh, but round four was a Poirier round. And, and yet you have a judge giving it to, to Makachev. It's like, what are you talking about? So that, that alone was the difference in that fight being a potential win for Poirier if he goes to a decision. Um, instead of he's going to lose a, a decision no matter what happens in round five. Because I thought that fight was very close. It was a really good fight. Round four, Poirier, I thought won that round very clearly. He was landing. He was staying up. He was doing a good job. But he did tweak his knee. And he wouldn't talk about it after, at the, you know, in, in the, in, after the fight ended. But he did tweak a knee. And it was obvious. And he talked about it in, to his corner. But round five, I thought he was doing well. And, and st again, staying up, staying up, landing. Whether he was winning or losing, it was a close round. There was still two minutes or so, two and a half minutes to go in the round. And Makachev does that weird, grabs him by the ankle, leg throws, spins him around, and then catches him in a choke, and the fight's over. So kudos to Islam Makachev. That's a monster, monster win. I think he's a bit out of his mind looking to fight the winner of Leon Edwards or Bilal Muhammad. That's just ridiculous. You know, this, 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 con the UFC created a problem with these super fights. With this guy goes up. Makachev still has not fought Justin Keiichi. He has not fought Max Holloway. He has not fought Michael Chandler. Heck, he has not fought Conor McGregor. He, he has not found, fought, um, Matus Gamrot. He did fight Ga Saruki in, in, you know, some years ago, but that fight needs to happen. This stuff where these guys want to just jump up to the next weight class, brother, no. You need to defend your belt against people in your class. Because I'm sorry, Leon Edwards will take Islam Makachev's cookies. This mindset that Edwards, like he fought Usman. Kamara Usman is a better, it can take Makachev down. Like, can we stop this? Kamara Usman can take Makachev down and dominate a fight against Makachev. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster. And Leon Edwards in the second fight pretty much stymied Usman's takedowns for the most part. So I don't want to hear that. I'm so sick of these guys trying to avoid fighting guys in their class. They haven't fought yet. It's just crazy to me. Now, the co-main event, Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. Sean Strickland dominated that fight from bell to bell. Complete domination. Yet some crazy judge who should lose his license in judging has it. 49-46, Paulo Costa. That's absolutely insane. It is exhausting watching judges just completely destroy fights. You know, I'm not saying that you have to agree with everything and agree with, I mean, everyone has to agree. That's why you have split decisions. But when one fight 
when one card has it 50 45 the other way i had a 50 45 strickland and the other judge or one judge has it 49 46 the other direction what rounds did you think that he won and i get real frustrated listening to the commentary because i try to not listen to those guys because they they're they're watching from a perspective of they want to keep people interested and say, oh, it's close. It's not close. That fight was not close. Strickland dominated that fight. Clearly. Clearly dominated that fight. So when you, when you look at it from that from that vantage point, it just makes no sense. You know, it, one judge had a 49-46 for Strickland, so he won it on a split decision. It was a dominant performance. A great performance by Strickland. I know he's sitting here saying, I'm sorry, the fight sucked. No, it didn't. You dominated the fight. You know? It is what it is. By round three, you can see Costa was completely exhausted. I still believe <clears throat> that Costa should fight at 205. He's not, he doesn't cut weight well enough to be fighting at 185. Doesn't make sense. What's next for uh, Strickland? Uh, the winner, the, either the either uh, the winner of Drew, Duplessis Adesanya or potentially a fight with Robert Whitaker. It's a possibility if he loses to Shemaev. Um, we'll see. Or he should just wait. Realistically, he has he 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 realistically should wait. Because if if Kamzat wins, you know they're giving Kamzat that title shot. But if Whitaker wins, I think he gets the belt. He gets the title shot against the winner of that other fight. And then um finally the, the last fight I want to talk about is uh I Kevin Holland. I'm sorry, Kevin Holland, exceptional performance. Catches a big shot, breaks Olajajic's arm, like Incredible performance by Holland. That's the guy I wanted to see versus Michael Venom Page. It made no sense what we saw there. I, I I don't understand why he fought the way he fought versus the MVP. And don't tell me it's the style. It's nonsense. He fought like he didn't know what he was doing. Whereas, you know, he did catch a shot, and he I, I enjoyed watching that fight, watching him perform. Nico Holland versus Alex Morono, fight, man. They came up, they banged. They banged, man. And it was a great fight. Enjoyable fight to watch. You know, Price gets the decision. And then finally, the fight I really want to hit on as well, Almeida, Jalton Almeida and Alexander Romanov. Almeida has bounced right back, and he is right back in the picture. You know, he lost that fight against Curtis Blades a couple months ago in Miami, and uh, <clears throat> dominant performance back to just backpacking dudes and finishing them off real fast. So great performance by Jalton Almeida. I like to see this guy learn to fight, you know, on his feet a little bit, throw some hands, but on the ground, he is as good as it gets. So that's a big-time performance by him. Who was up next for him? Sorogan. Sorogan seems to be the fight to me, looking at the rankings, because you have uh, Pavlovich fighting against Volkov. I don't think he should fight the loser. I think he should fight someone who's, I mean, although Khan's coming off of a loss to, you know, his last fight was a loss to John Jones. I, I think realistically you could have him fight versus Gone. And, uh, I, or, yeah, you could have him fight the loser of Volkov and, uh, and um, Pavlovich. That said, great card. Enjoyed it. Fix the judging. I'm so sick of these judges just butchering cards and butchering fights with ridiculous cards. And uh, that's all about all I got. You know, live from the hospital. I'll be getting home in about two days. Uh, but very excited to welcome my boy, my beautiful son, RJ, into this world. And uh, that's all I got. Come on now. Like, subscribe, follow. Come on now podcasts on facebook instagram and tiktok and come on now pod on twitter x come on now peace